Hey guys, Mr. Technology Nerd here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Acer Predator G desktop. So first, what I'm going to pretty much do, I'm pretty much going to do this hypercam video. I'm going to go through some benchmark tests, you know, some general Windows benchmark tests. Uh, of course, I'm using the trash can because I don't like one thing about Windows 8. It doesn't have a start menu. It's the only thing I don't like about it. So we're going to go ahead and actually run. I'm going to show you the actual Windows experience index right here. We have a 5.9 Windows Experience Index, and the low subscore is the primary hard disk. The disk data transfer rate is 5.9, so it's pretty low, but what do you expect from a hard drive? We have a 7.4 for gaming graphics, 7.4 for just regular desktop graphics, use the same graphics card. Uh, we have 8.0 for memory RAM, uh, and 8.0 for a processor. So what I'm going to do here now is actually I'm just going to go to Device Manager to show you a little bit of what is inside. Um, I felt that it wasn't really necessary to go on the aesthetics of the case again because it's in the unboxing video. So you can go check out the unboxing video to actually look at the case and look how it looks at on the outside. So we have Bluetooth of course, uh, we have some disk drives, we have a 16 gigabyte SSD in there um, and a two terabyte uh, hard drive. We have your AMD Radeon HD 8760 in there. We have a DVD R drive, D DVD drive. Just these are all human interface. Um, for processors of course we have your quad core i7 which with hyper threading shows up as eight cores. All the eight cores right here. Well, four cores with hyper threading. Uh, we have all the plugged in. Those are all extra things. That's pretty much a rundown. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM, as you can see right here. Uh, Intel Core i7 3770 CPU at 3.4 gigahertz. Per um, and of course, we're running Windows 8. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run a Geekbench test right now which I will search up through here. Strangely enough, I probably won't find it either. Huh. I actually might have uninstalled it, but I must say though, I will actually give you the results right here. I will let you know how it is. It was 10 thousand it was in ten thousand uh the results on Geekbench, which is fairly well for this uh computer right here so what i'm going to do now is actually i'm going to stop this video over here and to give you a little uh gaming see how it runs the frames per second i'm going to actually go run uh bioshock infinite and record on fraps so i'll be right back with that so here we are with bioshock infinite uh just starting up right now And now we're at the menu here. Yeah, let's get this started. So let's make sure that the options what is it set on. So right now it's set on high, and that's pretty optimal for right now uh, for Bioshock Infinite. So we're gonna keep it on actually high. I feel that if I run on ultra, the FPS will drop instantaneously. And I just to let you know, guys, this may have some spoilers in it for anybody who hasn't played the game. So be sure you watch out for that. Or not. Looks like just the beginning of the game. That card. Already on 
high, it's running at 30 frames per second, give or take. If I'm mistaken some of craps, please excuse me because this is my first time using craps. I actually never used craps before. So I am playing around with it, but if I made a mistake, please do leave it in the comments below. If you can pretty much, I'm pretty much just looking at visuals right now. Like they expect me to sit in their fancy chair. So we're gonna go ahead and sit down for the ride. <laughs> so now, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> go! Nature shall friend, Pilgrim. The bind beams are there as a safeguard. Run through this little cutscene uh, and I'll demonstrate this on another game. Uh, uh, Tomb Raider with press No, pass. no, god damn it! Attention! <laughs> Ascension in the count of five. five. Count no, of four. No, no, no. Three, two, two one. No. Ascension. 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 All right, we're gonna just stay calm. Five thousand feet. Ten thousand feet. Hallelujah. So that's pretty much it for this Bioshock Infinite gameplay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually run out to um, switch it out to Tomb Raider because um, I can actually get some fighting scenes in Tomb Raider. Right now I don't really have any saved up for Bioshock so we can actually get into combat on Tomb Raider and see how it handles that. So I'll be right back and we'll go on Tomb Raider. Well, it looks like I actually didn't have Tomb Raider on this computer, so I went to the next best thing. This uh, new game, Slender the Arrival, uh, it's a game that actually I help support, um, is the next best thing anyways. It's pretty actually pretty hard to run and pretty graphics intensive, but um, of course we will set everything to very high. Oh, wait, there's a mouse sensitivity. Uh, Graphics. Yep, everything's on ultra. Okay, that's good. And we'll just run that up. And this game is pretty creepy. You should definitely consider buying it. It's not too expensive either. So we're going to go ahead and start the game. Skip that opening cutscene. Actually, right now it's actually struggling to play uh, Slender the Arrival. It's at 15 FPS. It's actually struggling to play it. I mean, but I notice close to no lag. But let's see what happens when we lower the settings a little bit. Keep this down to high, put anything that's ultra down to high. We'll see what that does for now. Pretty much didn't change too much, it's still 15 frames per second. It's probably this motion blur. Let's try the motion blur. Let's see what happens when I get everything down to medium. Actually, keep that on high shader quality is something that actually uses a lot of GPU. Turn off reflections. This should go off. That. And the FPS picked up 17 right now. 16. As you see, if I move the mouse, that motion blur kicks in. So it's a pretty graphics intensive game, but actually. The computer is up running it that bad even at 17 frames per second. So it's doing its job pretty well. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the desktop and uh, that concludes our gameplay for today. 
So pretty much, uh, in a nutshell, this computer is not half bad. Uh, it's a little pricey uh, with an MSRP of $1,200 or so. Um, definitely, uh, I build my own computer, so I would not buy an actual built gaming computer. But um, for people who don't know how to build computers, uh, it's definitely a great computer to have, uh, great to game on, um, and all that fun stuff. It can run Bioshock Infinite on Ultra and pretty much any game you can throw at it um, on reasonable settings. Um, and Acer always surprised me with the products they make. They are high quality, do not fail, do not fail at all. Actually, I, I've had some experience with some Acer products such as monitors and desktops before and I've had them for quite a while um, before they actually failed on me. So guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you like this review of the Acer Predator G. Before to follow, be sure to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and all of that fun stuff. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.